Well, hello, everybody. Have you ever heard of spherical pi? And do you know what the difference is between pi and spherical pi? If you don't, you might find this interesting. Now, we all know what a circle is, but the ones we usually think of are 2D Euclidean circles like the one I've drawn here. We know that for any circle, the ratio of the circumference of the circle to its diameter is that constant we call pi as a value of 3.14159 goes on forever. But it's based on the radius and the circumference. So pi is the circumference divided by two times the radius or circumference divided by diameter, same thing. But now what happens if we have a sphere like this? And what happens if we draw a circle on that sphere like that? The radius of that circle is no longer a straight line. It's a curved line because it's across the surface of that sphere. So clearly that radius can't be the same as the radius for a Euclidean circle. But how can we figure out what it should be? Well, let's give it a try. We've got a given sphere here with a radius we call R and a circumference I called C sub GC for great circle. That being the largest circle you could possibly draw on a sphere. And we want to find a circumference of another circle. We'll call that one C sub alpha. And we need its diameter as well. So let's let this angle here be angle alpha between the vertical line and the radius line that's drawn. That's the angle that we're looking at. And the Euclidean radius of that circle is therefore R times sine alpha. That's just simple trigonometry. So the circumference of that circle is going to be two times that radius times pi. In other words, two pi R sine alpha. But the spherical radius of that circle is going to be R times alpha. So the spherical diameter is 2r times alpha. We'll call that d sub s. So spherical pi, we can call it pi prime, is the spherical radius divided by the spherical diameter. In other words, c sub alpha divided by d sub s. And spherical pi is 2 pi r sine alpha divided by 2r alpha. Let's get rid of the 2s and the r's. And spherical pi is equal to pi sine alpha divided by alpha. That's all there is to it. Well, let's find out what the limits of that would be. And first, let's take a look at what happens when our angle alpha tends toward pi over 2. In other words, right there. Well, the limit as alpha approaches pi over 2 is pi sine alpha divided by alpha, and that's the limit of pi sine of pi over 2 divided by pi over 2. Well, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so it's pi divided by pi divided by 2. In other words, the limit is just 2. So if we draw the biggest circle we can on the surface of a sphere, that's a great circle. Spherical pi for that circle has a value of 2.0. But now what happens if we draw the smallest circle we possibly can? What happens when alpha tends to zero? Well, in that case, the limit is alpha tends to zero of pi sine alpha divided by alpha, which in this case is the limit of pi sine zero divided by zero. Well, the sine of zero is zero. So now we have zero divided by zero, and that's indeterminate. But we have a way of getting rid of that. We can use L'Hopital's rule and we can take the derivative of the top and the bottom of that. So the derivative of sine is cosine. And the derivative of alpha is just 1. So spherical pi for this condition is pi times cosine 0, which is 1, divided by 1, or simply pi. So now we've defined the boundaries of it. Spherical pi lies between a value of 2.0 and pi. You know, I wonder if anybody else knows about this.
Here's a screenshot from Google Earth. I've drawn a circle that's a little over 1,800 miles in radius. That's pi over 6 in terms of radians. So spherical pi would be pi times the sine of pi over 6 divided by pi over 6. Spherical pi would have a value of 3.0 for this circle. In Google Earth, we've got a radius of 1802.7 and a circumference of 10,782.21. If we divide that circumference by twice that radius, you get spherical pi of 3.0. So that's the story, and that's why spherical pi cannot be a constant. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe buttons down there. There's a link to the Patreon and PayPal. If you want to support the channel i would really appreciate it and with that we'll see you guys on the next one